there's only one way to start and that's to just jump in. I'm here with my buddy Ryan Pallet. Yeah. I just wanted to do a quick artist feature showcase because he's been working on some really cool stuff. I'll be sharing that with everybody here. Uh, so uh, introduce yourself. Uh, well, my name's Ryan Pallet. Uh, mm. I've been a friend of Ahmed's for a number of years now. And um, yeah, I, I do art. I'm from California. Love drawing. Um, draw a lot of characters. That's that's pretty much my main thing, and uh, mostly with pen. As well. mm -hmm. That's that's my my recent medium of choice. Yeah, ridiculous. Uh, yeah, because I, I I prefer pencil. It's like I don't. <laughs> I mean, because of you, I've been trying with pencil pen. Uh, I mean, I'm getting okay. It's just you're doing I, great. I hate seeing you draw that good with pen, and I can't. Oh, come on. It's unacceptable. Anyway, yeah. Uh, I forgot. It's been so long. I, I say this every time. Every time I record a video for YouTube, I say that it's been so long I forgot how to. And it, it's true every time. I don't know what I'm doing. Anyway, so um, what I want to talk about is that uh, you've been traveling. Yeah. Uh, you've been gone from California for two months. Uh, you spent some time here. I've been sort of running a little mentorship with you. Yeah. Training you here and there. And Matt as well. Say hi, Matt. Hello. <laughs> uh, but he doesn't have anything to show here just yet, so that'll be later. He's doing a really cool Kickstarter project. More about that later. Um, but uh, so before you, you came here, and also we're going to have some uh, footage of, of you sketching yeah. with Penn playing while we talk. Uh, and then we'll come back and look at this. But uh, so you're from California. What have you studied from? Did you go to school, art center? What's the deal? Um, so I, I spent a couple of years studying at uh, CDA and Brainstorm. Um, CDA being Concept Design Academy. Yeah, Concept Design Academy okay. in Pasadena. Uh, mostly with Kevin Chen, mm. if anybody knows him. He's, he's a great teacher. Yeah. Um, yeah, other than that, just a lot of self-study and uh, drawing on my own and trying to figure things out. Yeah, oh, by the way, so I do want to show your old stuff. If you could send that to me so I could overlay it right now yeah yeah for sure <laughs> oh, all right cool um yeah I, when you said that to me i was like i don't know if i could help this guy <laughs> but yeah, that stuff i'm honestly. kidding it's, i saw potential <laughs> but um so you went to cda mm -hmm. uh brainstorm you didn't opt for the whole like two hundred thousand dollars for art center thing yeah no good move good move um what do you what do you want to do like what would you be willing to do what's what's your ideal situation um i mean you're you're kind of going into it new uh yeah but yeah what do you want to do uh i think i think i would probably want to be doing character concepts i think that's probably where my strong my strong suits are um freelance or studio work i don't, I don't think i have a particular preference right now seeing as I'm, I haven't really done any professional work at all, so uh, anything would do, I guess. Uh, Somebody hire this guy. <laughs> uh, no, but I, from my perspective, seeing you develop uh, your skill and I guess your sense of comfort when you do draw and design, uh, your strength is definitely coming up with tons of ideas. Uh, like You'll come up with one theme and it sprouts into this like 10-page thing of all these amazing things, and I think that's your, your strength. Um, and I, Thanks. when I see that, I'm like, okay, you're you're a concept artist, you're a designer, you you can illustrate. Um, but what seems to really, I guess, what you seem to flourish with is coming up with ideas and uh, iteration and, and variations. So that, that's that's pretty cool. Um, and as we discussed, your weapon of choice is uh, yeah, the ballpoint pen, of ballpoint course. Pen. It's, it's Specific, just pencil, you know? Specifically the one from the place you worked at? Yeah, Jim. yeah. I just grabbed stacks of them before I left. And yeah. Handfuls, you know. I, mm. I, I'm actually... I don't have any more now. <laughs> I'm on my last one, so... I mean, you still got friends over right there. Yeah, you know? I'll get yeah. more. Um, so I'll play part of the video, um, which won't be... Actually, we could... No, we, it won't be synced up. Um, but just to kind of jog your memory. Um, yeah. We could talk about your sketching process, because I think what's fascinating... Um, when people watch you draw, um, I think Chloe is mentioning this too, like your shape design is really, it seems confident. It seems like each shape has like its kind of presence. It's not like loose or, um, it is loose, but it's not, ah, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it, it just feels like you have a very comfortable way of laying down marks that have a solid silhouette. Um, 
So the question is, are, are you consciously thinking of this or is it more intuitive? Did you learn this from someone? Does it come from mileage? Like, what's the deal here? Uh, I think a lot of it is mileage. Um, I mean, I, there are things that I try to keep in mind, I guess, when I sketch. Mm. Uh, but there, there is a lot of just subconscious flow stuff that is happening. I mean, yeah. but as far as like stuff that I'm keeping in mind, it's usually just the principles of shape design and like simple versus complex and big, medium, small and yeah. keeping an interesting silhouette that isn't too even on either side, unless that's the intention that I'm going for. Did you like, from when you're at CDA learning from Kevin and, and uh, other classes, did they cover shape design and like silhouette and balancing and having things not even and even here and whatnot? Um, yeah, honestly, Kevin, Kevin did a really good job of, of kind of explaining that to us. Uh, it took it took a couple tries for me to really get it through my head though. Uh, I think the first time I took one of his classes, I, I was very lost and and was mm -hmm. definitely trying to still struggling with um, like fundamental things. Kevin's only teaching, right? Is he working on stuff? He's he did some freelance stuff, uh, like he did stuff for Guardians. Right. Okay. And I mean, I think he still does freelance, but I think for for the most part now he's just running Concept Design Academy. Hmm. Um. So another thing that I mentioned when I when I watch you draw, it's really mesmerizing because because of what I mentioned about the shapes, it looks like it's flowing naturally. Um, it looks like uh, you're enjoying it, right? And it, it's easy to say like, yeah, you just kind of draw what you like and lean into it. But uh, was it always like that, or did you find a way to like what you're doing uh, to just enjoy that process as opposed to the rigid kind of um, approach where you're trying to like do something. You, you, you understand what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Uh, I think I think a lot of it is just just from drawing so much. I, I I've started to enjoy what I'm doing and and picking shapes that I really really enjoy mm. using all the time and trying to incorporate that into into whatever design I'm working with. And like yeah, I think I think a big part of it is just. Um, Wait, what did you ask? I forgot, dude. <laughs> How do you find a way to liking what you're doing? That was the question. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I think I think it just came from sketching a lot. Like, sketching just a bunch. And, mm. and making that my habit in my free time instead of, like, playing a game or watching a show or anything like that. Just right. getting really, really comfortable <clears throat> with my own work and, and uh, you know, just having fun with the process, I think. Right, because in your room... I, you have this big stack of like loose paper yeah and you were just you just sketched away mm -hmm. and then you said you you were more comfortable with that because in sketchbooks it felt like you were yeah there's a lot of pressure yeah, I, I think okay. yeah I think and starting that with well, that went away the pressure right yeah yeah for yeah. sure I, I mean it, it comes back every now and again but it's it's easier to stave off because I I feel way more confident in just my ability to to generate ideas and mm. things like that um but yeah, I think a big part of it in the beginning was the pressure. Uh, okay. And I, I just couldn't draw in a sketchbook for like a year. Right. Just because it was too hard. It was too stressful. Right. I'm and, sure a lot of people can empathize with that. Yeah. And I, I had a stack of 11 by 17 sheets just lying around. And I was taking a brainstorm class at the time. And I just started sketching nonstop every mm. day. And sketching out ideas for not only just for my class, but just playing with shapes and playing with like shadow shape and and just shape design in general and yeah and just getting getting used to the medium and getting used to drawing and and creating ideas and and i guess through that process just eventually becoming more confident and telling myself hey i can i can draw in a sketchbook now it's not yeah, it's not yeah. a problem anymore so that's awesome uh so let's talk about the project that you did um mm -hmm. well before you even let's say, started compiling all these cool sketches and making layouts with them. Yeah. Uh, we talked about starting a portfolio for you and you wanted to do all these different projects. You have yeah. these ambitious ideas with really elaborate world building specifics. Um, how did you go from that to uh, just compiling what you just sketched in all these you know, sketchbooks for fun? How did that become your project as opposed to the other thing? Well, I think... I think doing the projects really made me think about my design work a lot more. And um, when I think when even when I was here before I left, uh, before I started doing the 
just the sketches. I was sketching still, but I was doing uh, just more simple stuff and not really thinking about like ideas or designs or being consistent with with an idea and and like seeing it through to an to an end. Um, but after doing those projects and kind of getting that mileage in, just generating ideas, I think when I when I started doing the, the design sketches, I was really trying to make an emphasis to think about design and mm. think about variation and and also just get a little more intricate with uh, with the way that the sketches looked. Makes sense. And I guess just through doing that and, and spending a lot of time doing that and having fun with it, I ended up having a bunch of sketches that... Yeah, yeah. Because, like, you... It felt like when you started your first projects, which was like the candle characters and all that stuff, they looked great, um, but it didn't flow as naturally as when you were doing these things because uh, it felt like maybe there was more pressure and, yeah. um, you know, you, maybe you thought that it had to be a certain way, it had to be finished rendered paintings and all this stuff. But, I mean, ideation and design is, is requires iteration. You have to, you can't just jump right to a finished, polished render. For sure. Um, having said that, let's take a look at the art station stuff you recently posted. And by the time this video is up, you're we're hoping to have more of the yeah. paintings. And yeah. Uh, yeah, right now we have all the sketches. So um, yeah, I, it's so cool. Um, definitely, if you're watching this, go to Ryan Pallet's uh, art station. It's Ryan R Y A N Pallet P A L L E T T, which is funny because you're an artist, artist Pallet. Wow, spelled right. differently though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, what's your idea with the uh, the elephant sketches? Like, how did you start this? Were you just like, oh, elephants look cool? Um, well, let's give them a hat. Well, I I had been talking to a friend of ours, uh, Theo, and who do I know him? Is he Julian? Do Julian. You know Julien? No. Yeah, no, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who that guy is. What's up, Theo? But uh, hope you're watching. He he was telling me about these characters in D and D that. Uh, called warlocks that pray to different gods mm. and draw power from those gods and uh, the first thing that my mind jumped to for whatever reason was crazy elephant gods that are all seeing and all knowing and they just have these amazing powers and sometimes they're the way that they look is beyond human comprehension and um, so you're like coming up with whole mythology here yeah yeah, yeah. for sure I was thinking about just the different kinds of ways that I could express that idea Nice. And you don't feel any like rigidity or resistance when you're sketching this stuff? No. It just I, kind of flows. Yeah, it was fun. I mean, that yeah. the big guy took me... I was sketching him for like just two straight hours, just with pen. Yeah, just... This, <laughs> this next one's like my favorite. Yeah, the, um, these these were more akin to what I was thinking, like as far as like an elephant god, like just... I'm like the guy on the the right I did first and he... The whole idea with him was that he just has m multiple arms, and he has these two arms that he puts through his earrings. Oh God! And casts magic. That's how he casts his like abilities and stuff like that. Yeah. And um, the second guy, the guy on the left, was more of a uh, like a direct approach to the to the same idea. But nice. I wanted to make him like a mountain of arms. I like I like this one a lot. Um, like the concept's really cool. Uh, and to to top it off, you have um, an aesthetic layout where it's got this duality symmetry going on um and then the borders yeah, thanks are, like Appreciate they're even it. like elephants looking down <laughs> and that, that goes to show anyone listening like it, like let's look at the original sketches um they're really cool and you can certainly just scan them in or take a picture and post them but when you take the time and uh lay them out and consider the whole page and layout as part of the character an extension of the character um it takes it a long way, and uh, it's kind of it feels like more legitimate as a design, um, and even like putting the border and it, it, it's it's like ready to be a poster print. Um, so that really that's really effective, and that's something I realized about my work. It's like it feels um, kind of it, it's cool in the sketchbook, but when you lay it out like this, it makes a huge difference. Yeah. So get the other ones, especially when you're not forcing it. I think when when you're just when it's just your natural, the the sketches that are the most natural for you, and yeah. you kind of can compile them and put them together in a in a nice and interesting way. Then right. it, it feels like 
a more finished thing and it's way less forced than yeah. than if you were just trying to make something for the sake of having a finished piece. Ah, these shapes, man. So tell us about Krampus. <laughs> oh yeah, so um, this was around Christmas time and uh, oh, like right, I said, right. yeah. I, was, I was thinking about being more consistent with design work and uh, I mean, I learned about Krampus uh, from German class in Germany and I mean, it's not just a German thing, obviously, but mm. um, he seemed like a really interesting character. He had horns and he has a basket that he takes children away in and, you know, the naughty kids, they, they don't get coal in, in those traditions. They get oh. they get stolen away by Krampus. Oh my He's God. like Santa's little demon helper. Right. Um, but yeah, I was just trying to be conscious about design work and um, ideating and just creating a bunch of different interesting ways to show who that character is and... Yeah. Uh, I can't wait to see a lot of these just uh, painted. Um, I mean, as concepts, they're good to go right now. You can hand them off to a 3D modeler. They should be able to model a lot of this stuff. But um, seeing your take on that would be cool, too. Yeah, yeah. I definitely yeah. want to paint both of those guys. Yeah. And good old Vamp. Oh, yeah. This is, uh, I was just listening to, again, Theo's, he was running a mm -hmm. D&D campaign, and I got inspired by the vampire character yeah. that's, that's like the main villain of this one campaign and yeah i just ran with it and came up with ideas for him it seems like you kind of let the world and your experiences inform whatever you do with without resistance um i think i i've had a problem with that before because even if there was a cool idea out there or a theme and it sparks a cool idea uh part of me is like well no i have to be 100 percent original if something inspired it it doesn't count um which of thank god i've abandoned that way yeah. of thinking it's cool to see it flourish like this um and also what's cool about what we're seeing here is this could easily be uh like a comic style comic books and i know you don't really want to do comic books right yeah. you kind of want to stick to more design iteration and yeah for sure come up coming up with stuff i don't like, think i'm i'm not that great at comic stuff uh, although mm. it would be it'd be fun to do like covers or something like that right right um and Let's see, I was going to say something about this, but I forgot. Looks good. <laughs> yeah. Ah, Mr. Jin. I love this uh, This one riding on the carpet. And this is all ballpoint pen, just to remind you. Yeah, me. yeah. Um, and then you got the big bag of toys, Santa yeah. Jin. This is, yeah, I, this was still just riding that Santa theme. Uh, I, I just wanted to mm. mix it up and make a gin. I, I, I like genies. I think they're cool. Yeah. They're just cool shapes all around. Uh, I love the, the turban shape and the way you can play with the beard. And, yeah. Yeah, just the carpet. And I wanted to kind of mix Santa into that. I re the thing that's working really well is there's, you know, you colored this on the right. has nice contrast. It brings our eye into the piece for the whole layout. And then the pipe has like this flow, which kind of is repeated with the the carpet here, and then the smoke going in and going back to the character. Yeah, that's a really good composition. I didn't think about that. It's crazy. And then um, even the beard's doing that too. But also, I think like anyone watching this um, may be inspired. Like I, seeing this and watching you sketch, it's like yeah, I kind of want to do this stuff. I want to draw, come up with ideas, and uh, not be too attached. Uh, maybe maybe not. I don't want to be too fixated on trying to do the perfect design, mm. but like you're going through sketches and allowing each one to have their own little flavor. Um, like some of these look darker and more evil um, than the one that you chose to color. Yeah. Mushroom dude? Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, that, that was a mushroom <laughs> Santa. Oh, okay. okay. I, I didn't include much of him, but I yeah, I had a, quite a few sketches of a mushroom Santa. Hey, fungi need uh, you know their holidays too. They need representation. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's just how it is. Let's go, dude. All right. Oh, Talk? I, yeah, go, go, go. Sorry, yeah. I, I did want to say, um, just in regards to like what you said about letting the world influence your sketches and, and just like letting mm. ideas come and go. I think for me, when it's when it's not a good when it's not a good idea, it's forcing. It's me forcing something. Uh, but if it's an idea that I'm really really jazzed about, like I mean, we we're just on that like about to go to the Triton page. Yeah. Those guys, I was. Oh, man, I was so jazzed about that idea, like after watching the lighthouse and listening to that, the speech that, that oh, yeah. guy gave, and I was telling you guys about it for days, and I just yeah. I couldn't get off of it. I just it's it's such a good like such a good speech, so much imagery, and yeah. I was just trying to bounce as many ideas out of that as I could. And, yeah, I mean, 
Yeah, we were at a coffee shop when you were sketching these. Uh, <laughs> oh, dude, I love this the, the scalp thing here you got going. Yeah, I was going for like that, you know, that like coral that kind of looks oh, like gross. brains. Yeah. Oh, God. See, that's the thing. I can't draw gross stuff like this, but it's really cool uh, to see. I just won't draw it. It's I, just, I stay a bit safe. <laughs> Especially barnacles. Oh, God. When they're on the side of the boats, I can't look at them. I love that. No. Oh, so many cool shapes. No. no. Oh, it's so cool. <laughs> um, yeah, man. Like, it, it's ready for an art book. Like, the way it's, it's laid out and, uh, and all that stuff. More Triton? Oh, yes, of course. of course. I like how the, the tentacles look like they're kind of squishy. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah, bud. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Sure. Uh, yeah, you got this... Uh, such a fun idea. Sea life happening up here. Yeah, that was... Taking okay. credit for that. Yeah, that was your idea, and I, <laughs> I, roll, I ran with it, you know. Yeah. Not afraid to yoink an idea if I can. The yoinks. Especially from the master himself. Please. Uh, please, please. Sure, 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 sure. Um, this is cool. He looks more like a like a a nomad version. Of, like if he's transformed into more of a human uh, like scale. Yeah. And you know, walking the earth. Yeah, I, I didn't want to tell you about this one because I thought you'd be grossed out. But oh god! I saw some some like barnacles that had these like <sighs> these like tubes coming out of them. And come on, that's that's where I got the idea for like the oh. dreadlock with the the barnacles hanging off. And all right, we're stopping this podcast. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, it's. It, He's a, he's a cool character. Yeah, yeah. Very, I I still see so many ways that I I feel like I could express him, and it'd and, be uh, very cool to see this animated or you know painted t like taken to a like a fully realized story in a movie or something. Oh, yeah, so much yeah. character happening here. I, I definitely definitely need to paint that guy. Yeah, a lot of female characters. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, you see them all. In the, there's a couple right there with the beards, you know. It's, you and I are opposites. Like, hey, that's. Yeah. that's I, but I'm trying. I'm trying to do more uh, drawings of uh, not fairy elf girls. Anyway, uh, more Santa. Oh yeah, of yeah. course. I, Got a gnome. So many Santa ideas. I was trying to do dwarf to Santas, elf Santas. I mean, yeah. I I really like. I was trying to run with this pattern design. Mm. I thought it was pretty fun, so I just echoed it everywhere. Even tried to put it in the border. Like, so cool. And you're painting this one right now, right? Yeah, yeah. this guy right here, yeah. yeah. He's, the beard is looking pretty sweet. I'm, I'm very happy with it. Very sculpted. <laughs> but thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, just just Santa's and some, some lighting tests just to right. get a mood on him. And wow. I think these lighting tests kind of show the potential of what you're capable of. Because like, uh, you could sketch really well and ideate, but also when it comes to exploring different lighting scenarios, color palettes... Uh, even color influences. Some are more warm. Some are more cool. Um, there's there's a whole world that's waiting to be explored by your hand once you're yeah out once about. once I'm once I'm able to to paint a little bit better. Hopefully, I, I mean it, you're already pretty pretty damn good, man. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what else? Thanks, man. What else we got here? Yeah, these are just the layouts for the for okay. these guys. I, I didn't include that that one. The okay. kind of like. That was more like a fantasy, sci-fi Santa. Okay. Just like a more alien one. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, Santas are fun, man. It was, I mean, Christmas was a, Christmas break was kind of a long time, so it was, right. I just kept sketching Santas. Uh, something I wanted to ask earlier, um, mm -hmm. man, he's like more of a buff Santa. It's crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so what, before you even jumped into doing this stuff, I know we mm -hmm. kind of talked about it a little, because uh, you went to Canada, you started sketching all this stuff, you came back here, and um, we turned this into your project. What was the, the biggest hurdles at first when you were, I guess, starting to learn uh, how to do this project stuff? I, I think I think it was, a big part of it was just learning how to let loose and, and have fun with it. I, I think mm. I had been telling myself that, like you said earlier, like it has to be this way, it has to be a certain thing, and I guess trying to break out of that was was one of the bigger hurdles and just trying to have fun with it. There seems to be a point where a switch flipped where you kind of gave yourself permission to just have fun. Yeah, yeah. It's I, almost like everyone should do that. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. I mean, not enough people, I feel like, enjoy looking at their own art or yeah. are pleased by it or it, it excites them, but I, I get, definitely get excited by this stuff. And it makes sense because, like, you know, a lot of us we're doing this stuff to kind of have a living makes yeah. sense and when we see other things that are popular or succeeding or what studios are looking for 
fair enough, you know, to do work for that and to be hired for it is, it looks like a good strategy to make mm -hmm. money. But um, this strategy, I think I want to applaud because you're leaning into what you like without trying to cater. And ideally, you'd be hired to just keep doing this. You know, uh, ideally, you know, it, sure. it might be other projects, ideas, or big movies, or small movies, whatever. Um, but you get hired for what you're showing, you know, not for, like, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but you get the picture. I, I get you, yeah. for sure. It's, it's a, it's a tough, I think it's a tough thing to, to tackle for, yeah. for a lot of artists. And I mean, I, I was the same way, just trying to be happy with, not, not happy to the point where you're overconfident and, mm. and complain and you become complacent because of it. Uh, but just kind of enjoying the journey and and uh, the experience of making art because it's like I mean if if you really want to pursue art, you know, it's it's kind of In my mind, it's it's a lifelong commitment. So why not? Right, yeah. Why not make things that you love and that excite you, you know, so uh, on that note I think, what did I, I think it might might have been from Mastery by Robert Greene or some other podcast about learning but uh, whenever there was an apprentice and a student, whether it's a painter or Da Vinci, whatever, uh, the student would not really be handheld or taught by the teacher or the artist, but rather they watched the artist and then they would just kind of absorb as much as they can. And when the student would do work, the, the teacher would kind of say, point things out that are in the blind spot. And I think that's the place where, uh, we learn the most, um, at least like, we, I mean, we learn other ways, but we learn very valuable things because it's somebody who's experienced uh, these these things and they're kind of just pointing things out. Much like when I'm, because uh, we're you know going to the climbing gym. Yeah. It's like I have no idea what I'm doing, and you're you're a V4 climber, V5, and you know. Yeah. Um, I'm still in the V2s, V3s, and I'm I'm not that good, but like you'll kind of just do a quick example of what you would do, and that changes everything. My footwork was in the wrong place, or I was leaning this way when I should. Just, you know lean the other way little things right and so same thing with art it's like well yeah of course you would nudge the character more to the left like it's too close to the edge I was, yeah i remember like looking at this <laughs> yeah um and your student mentality when you're in the student mode like you're i you're an ideal student because you just say okay <laughs> you do it i've had people where they're like yeah but and i'm just like shut up like okay you're unteachable like <laughs> and i'm just stubborn and i just want people to just do what I'm suggesting so that they understand through experience. Yeah, um, of course. And I'm a, I'm a hypocrite because I'm a horrible student. Uh, when I was at Art Center, I was, I mean, I was, I was all right, but I just wasn't exactly ideal. But it's nice as a teacher because I was teaching at CCS as well as Art Center and Brainstorm. Um, when students just kind of nod and give it a shot and see what happens, and then learn, they learn from it. Um, and you know, you did that pretty directly. Uh, that was the the final image um but overall really really great layout portfolio so far um Thank uh, you. can't wait to see the um the painted stuff and whatever you end up uploading more um do. Uh, do you have any words on the student mentality how is that like for you um i think honestly i think uh, sketching and 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 like you said climbing gave were, were really good uh stepping stones in, in trying to like tackle the whole putting your ego aside and mm. and just allowing yourself to be taken by the process and by right. the advice of somebody else uh i think i think when you can yeah when you can set the ego aside and and, and really just understand that there are things that you can still learn and there's always going to be things that you can learn you're, you're never going to stop being a student right in in any aspect yeah i i I certainly dealt with my own ego as a student for a long time. This whole, like, I already know everything mentality was not helpful, uh, especially when I really wanted to learn and I just shot myself in the foot by not um, being more open. But I don't know. I think I think just keep doing what you're doing because it's, it's working. Yeah. Keep trying to be a sponge. <laughs> just sponge it up as much as you can. Yeah. Um, so here's a question for me uh, mm -hmm. looking at your portfolio here. Uh, did you expect to have this layout of what this looks like when you first came? <laughs> no, not, not by any means, no. What, what did you expect? I mean, 
I was I was definitely hoping that uh, I'd I'd be a little better at drawing and um, just painting. have a better understanding of what I what I wanted to do and maybe just have some kind of semblance of progress uh, as far as like something that I could show. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, in no way was I expecting to have what I have now. <laughs> Funny, neither was I. So it's, hey. I, I mean, there's no way I could put, could have possibly predicted this kind of uh, outcome. It could have been paintings. It could have been. Uh, pixel art, you know, yeah. and that's that's you know kind of the theme I wanted to talk about with all of this is like leaning into what you just like, like whatever you're drawn to, whatever you, you know. We we talk about chasing your passions, but um, it's pretty simple once you've let go of like trying to prove yourself and, and all that, um, and having a, a community of people who you can kind of share your art with uh, yeah. has been really great for me too um yeah, yeah it definitely shows you that you know you're not alone in your struggles and yeah. there are people out there who are feeling the same things as you and right. people who want to bounce ideas off you and share you know their life experience with you and yeah you know, it's all learning experience it's all part of the process so let's rewind uh four months ago ryan pallet at home in california what advice would you give him from what you know now uh and this is kind of just like, what advice would you give other people who are like, yeah, I'm not really, yeah, I'm drawing, but I don't really have direction, and um, I'm starting out, I want to do a portfolio. It's like the idea of a portfolio is really daunting. So what advice For would sure. you give? Uh, I would say if if you can just start sketching and, and you know, I, I think I'm a big like uh, advocate for sketching from imagination. Uh, I mean, granted, I, I have a decent amount of experience with, like, uh, figure drawing and just mm. understanding shapes and I've taken a few classes and stuff like that but uh, sketching from imagination and just leaning into what you like like you said mm -hmm. and um, if you can push that and make that into some kind of portfolio then that's or like a project or just build a world off of an idea that's I think that's so, a big thing and that, that's a good point but a lot of people might struggle with coming up with ideas you know it's mm -hmm. like you I can give you one word like you know see king Neptune, and you come up with this. Not that I came up with as you, um, but you come up with all these ideas. But a lot of people might be fixated and stuck on one thing, and they get upset with the design, or they want wish it was better. How how do you get in the mindset of generating ideas? Um, I think a lot of it is playing with playing with archetypes and playing with shape design and trying to trying to fit the mold of your idea into whatever uh, archetype you can. Uh, like, I mean, if I was going like a sea king, maybe there's like a big burly sea king or like okay. a small scrawny sea king or like oh, a big fat sea okay. king, you know, just trying to, almost like they're a family of, okay. of the same, but they're right. the same character. Like mm -hmm. thinking about like, what, what would this guy's cousin look like? Or, right. you know, something like that. That's cool. All right. Um, and also to add to that, I guess a lot of this would be you, you also have to have a decent ability to draw first, right? Yeah, yeah I and would so, think so. Uh, but that's what that huge stack of paper in your room was. The mileage. So let's say, in order to be able to come up with ideas, have mileage so that you're comfortable with making shapes and mm -hmm. putting a face and like indicating barnacles or tentacles for these, you know, gross sea kings. Um, and then, yeah, the willingness to explore different ideas without being fixated on just one thing. Yeah, um, definitely. Totally. Yeah. But that's all that's really all that comes to mind uh that I have written. But yeah, really great stuff. I I'm I'm glad you, you know, came out here and we were able to kind of get this cool project uh, out of it. Um and I I also look forward to seeing the candle project. So, he's got yeah. this like uh all of these character archetypes, but there are candles and they have like different symbolism going through there's this one uh family of candles that are like based on atlas so they're like there's this one like candle character being carried by a bunch of things and there are like you know slaves it's, it's really cool stuff I, I can't wait to see that on here um so what else is uh coming up for you uh that we can expect um more paintings for okay. sure yeah. hopefully i that that's the goal right now just yeah. trying to get some of this stuff painted um like you said the candle project uh yeah. trying to get that more fleshed out and laid out nicely like this like these pages right here and uh, 
yeah, I think just more of that, more more art, lots more sketching. That's definitely going to yeah. be happening. Yeah. Um, hopefully, hopefully, I can find some work in the next year or so. Just I hope so. Doing doing yeah. stuff like this. I, yeah. that, that would be the dream. Honestly. Yeah, I look at this. I'm like, I want to play this game. You know, <laughs> when I look at your work. Um, yeah, very fun. Uh, is there anyone you want to say hi to? Hi, mom. <laughs> hi, mom. Dude. That, uh, other than that, uh, my friend Paul back home. Oh, fuck Paul. Paul, what are you doing? Get stop playing Final Fantasy. Like, hang out with us. He's my boy. Yeah, we'll go climbing. I'm yeah. excited to climb with him again. Hang out. Yeah. I'll take him out sketching. We're gonna, you know. He's really good. We're gonna yeah. art it up. Oh yeah. I can't wait to see more from Paul Sal Sal Salada. Salad what is Salarda? It? Salarda. Right. Yeah, good stuff. Mr. Paul Salad, of yeah. course. Yeah, I look forward to being back out in California again um, for a little bit. I'll be there for Lightbox. Um, and it, oh, also I'm doing a workshop for Brainstorm somewhere in the early summer? Something. Summertime. Yeah, I'll, I'll let everybody know. Yeah. Um, Hopefully we can hang out. Yeah, that would be for sure. Ideal. Yeah, we could do. We could record a round two, see where you're at. A follow-up, yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. Any last words before we uh, wrap it up? Um... Uh, I think, as far as I can think, um, shape design, I think, is the most important thing, mm. I would say. I, I, as far as all fundamentals go, I would say, if you're going to study something, I mean, study everything, study all fundamentals, really, right. but, like, kind of off to the side, bracketed around all of the fundamentals, like perspective and anatomy and all of those. Shape design. Think about shapes right, all the right. time. It, it, it's, it's what makes your work y you, and it's what makes your work interesting, and... Uh, it, it adds its own flavor, you know. Uh, I think when when people when people's art starts to look unoriginal, it's because they don't have shapes that they've found and right. developed and and that they use in their work all the time. If there's one thing I wish someone taught me, it would be shape des shape design. I had to kind of teach myself. Uh, and to anyone listening, if you're curious about what we mean by shape design, what I would suggest is uh, understanding things like. Um, you know, obviously the, the, the main shapes like circle, square, triangle, from those you can make a lot of different shapes, curves, C curves, S curves, um, and, and understanding that how shapes interact. Um, but ratios, big, medium, small, making sure, you know, things aren't too even. I mean, sometimes you want to, yeah. but there's like, you could probably write a book, m multiple books on shape design, because um, it shows up in typography, calligraphy, architecture, uh, landscape architecture if anyone's weird enough to do that stuff um, and it's like uh, it it's just so I guess important that I wish I had that earlier on um, it even shows up in like brush strokes like using a big brush and then a yeah. medium brush and a small brush um, that's all you know it kind of amalgamates so I agree yeah that's definitely an important thing have you have you seen the um the video, the four artists paint one tree. Yes, yeah. I think I think that is a really good example of yeah. shape design because it's it's how you internalize the world and how you view the world and mm -hmm. how you kind of mix all those feelings up and and all those ideas and it's it's about what you want to capture and and uh, yeah. and show to people and the way that you do that is shape design. I mean, to Ivan Earl like tore it up. <laughs> oh, he, he was uh, I think my favorite one of the four. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Definitely look up that video, anyone watching. It was a Disney thing, right? Yeah. Four Disney artists. Super old video. Yeah. It's like 480p. Right. <laughs> okay, awesome. Well, I think that about wraps it up. Um, quick uh, notes. I will be in London. If this, visit, if this video is not already out, but I will be in London for Vertex uh, February 26th. And I uh, hope to meet new people there. That'll be fun. Um, and then I'll be in Colombia. I think, I forgot when, but I'm doing a workshop at Blank Atelier uh, for three days. I believe Evan Amundsen and uh, Jana Schirmer had did that before. Um, that'll be interesting. I'll probably be focusing on character design, symbolism, and coming up with your own kind of like uh, like uh, style or something, but that'll be really uh, fun to do. Anyway, I look forward to all that stuff, and uh, I hope I end up making more videos, because I, I forgot I had a YouTube channel. Um, <laughs> but uh, aside from that, um, thanks for watching, and definitely check out Ryan Pallett's work. Where can they find you? You have, uh, like, a Instagram, right? Yeah, Instagram, just Ryan Pallett, same same spelling as my, my art station. Um, R-Y-A-N-P-A-L-L-E-T-T. -T. And do you have a website yet? 
No, not yet. All right, cool. I, we'll I, work I on should that. make a blog or something just yeah. with a, all my sketch pages. But yeah. cool. Well, uh, Ryan, thanks for joining me, and Matt. Th- Hi. Yeah, thanks for joining as well. No yeah, we'll get you next sometime. Yeah. Right, thanks for having me, man. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, see you next time. Bye.